Hey guys, it's me, Bad Grisham. Today marks the beginning of my new version of the series. From now on, I'll be making 5 builds a month and they'll all be posted within the first few days of the month. The prices of the builds for this month are 500, 600, 750, and $1,000. If you want to see the special video with the fifth price point, give me a suggestion down in the comment section. Now to move on with this build, I'm going to show you a $500 gaming PC build that will get into the world of PC gaming. Whether it's a gift or it's a personal build, this is going to be the best possible starter PC that I can make at this price point. And it will let you at least play every game you throw at it with medium settings, including some of the more resource heavy games like Battlefield 4 and Titanfall. Some of the older and less resource heavy games like Skyrim, South Park The Stick of Truth, and DayZ should be able to be kept on higher level settings with no issues, and older games will be able to be run maxed out. The graphics card in this system should last for quite a while until an upgrade is needed, so with that being said, let's get started with the build. For processor, I chose the AMD Anthelon X4760K. It's a quad-core processor clocked at 3.8GHz, and this is a K-series processor, which means they will be overclocked to well over 4GHz if you have an aftermarket cooler. But if you don't plan on overclocking, or if you have no idea what it is, it's still perfectly fine at stock settings. But if you do want to pay a little bit extra for an aftermarket cooler to bump up your speeds, or just to keep your PC a little bit cooler, I'll leave a link in the description. The Anthelon X4760K will run you about $90. For motherboard, I chose the MSI FM2 A75 MA E35. It supports overclocking with the processor, which is kind of important if you ever want to overclock, along with two USB 3 ports, six USB 2 ports. It's overall just a solid motherboard with a bunch of extras for only 60 bucks. For the graphics card, I chose a 2GB MSI Radeon R9270. After the graphics card mining fiasco, the prices of these cards are finally going back down again. Because of that, it's a great card to have on this build. Due to it being an R9, this card now supports Mantle, which will bump up the quality and speed of Mantle-supported games like Battlefield 4. The single graphics card can also run any game you throw at it from mid to high settings. It should last for quite some time before an upgrade is actually needed. If you do have an extra 20 bucks and you want a drastically better version of this card, I highly recommend getting the 270X version. 2GB MSI Radeon R9 270 run you about $140. Memory isn't that hard of a component to go with, so I went with an 8GB stick of Crucial Ballistics Sport DDR3 RAM. It's rated at 1600MHz, which is plenty for games and some multitasking. And unfortunately, the price of RAM is constantly fluctuating, which is never a good thing. But you can now have to spend about 70 bucks for 8 gigs. Hard drives are simple components to pick, as they constantly see the same. Once again, I'm just going to go with a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. Caviar Blue is a very reliable hard drive, and a terabyte is plenty of space for your games, movies, music, pictures. It's just a great fit for everything you need to store in your hard drive. Now there is a small difference between the Caviar Blue and the Caviar Black, which is around $20 more. Unless you get a good deal or you just want that small bump in speed, go with the Black, but if not, you'll be perfectly fine with the Blue. The Caviar Blue comes in around 60 bucks. Up next is the power supply, which is the most important part of any build, mainly because you need power to run your system. Always remember to not be cheap with a power supply because it runs everything, and you definitely don't want your PC to catch on fire. So make sure you get a good quality supply over a great sale price. My recommendation is the Corsair Builder 430 watt power supply. 430 watts is plenty for this build and it's 80 plus bronze certified, which means it's a high quality power supply and it can actually help you lower your power bill. If you do plan on upgrading your graphics card in the future though, it will take more power. So moving up to a 500 or 600 watt power supply isn't a bad idea if you have an extra 20 bucks to spend. You can get this for around $40. Now the optical drive in this PC really isn't needed unless you want a Blu-ray drive, and mostly unless you use CDs, the only thing you'll ever be using it for is to install the OS. I just want a cheap, reliable reader and burner which is an ASUS. It's a simple basic drive and it only runs you about 20 bucks. You can always upgrade to a Blu-ray drive if you want to put in an extra 40 bucks, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go with that route. Now finally is the case, and once again this is where your personal opinion, or your general cheapness comes in. Sometimes computer cases can be up to the 100, so to keep this build moderately cheaper but still have a good number of extras, I went with a Cougar Spike. It's a great quality case, it has a simple style and holds everything together well. It's also a micro ATX case, which means it has a very small form factor compared to a normal computer tower. It's your build, so you can do whatever you want in terms of the case, but if you just want a cheap, reliable one, you can get this case for $35. Well, that's about it, guys. This is my guide for a quality $500 PC, which should last for quite some time before it ever becomes outdated. Now, the prices of any components can change often, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to PCPartPicker.com. It's a website that you can use to plan out your PC build online, and you can see the lowest prices for the components that you need. That's it for this video, guys, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of them, click the like button. I'll have three other builds available for you guys this month. One for $600, $750, and $1,000 PC. Click on the links in the video when they're available if you want to see one of them. 
If you enjoy my videos, you can click here to subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out. It shows me when I see some more of my builds. I also probably should mention that I started a new series of videos that I put up every week. It's a review series called Unfair Opinions. My latest review of Iron Man 2 is right here. I hope to see you guys in the next video.